Hey guys, we got Docker set up in the last video, but we weren't persisting data for a PostgreSQL database, so whenever the container turned off or was destroyed, we lost all our data in our database, which is a problem. So in this video, we're going to fix that by adding volumes. This is the way Docker recommends persisting data. And how it works is we set up a place on our computer where whenever the container writes to a certain folder, it also writes that data to the folder on our computer as well. So when the container is destroyed, we still have that backup on our computer, and it uses that when it starts back up too. So let's get started with doing that. It's called volumes, and we're going to be adding this to our database service. So we're going to say volumes, and we're going to create a new one. And first we specify the place on our computer. I'm going to create a folder called PG data right here. So new folder PG data. And I'm going to specify where I want it to be written inside the container, which if we go to PostgreSQL's um, Docker image uh, documentation, it talks about right here how the default location, we're going to copy this, is right here for Postgres to write its data. You can switch it, of course but I'm gonna leave the default. So now by specifying this, whenever Postgres writes its data here in this data folder, it'll also write to this PG data folder that we have right here, right there. So when the container's destroyed, we'll have it in PG data, and then when it boots back up, it'll read from PG data, or not read, it may, they might keep them in sync. I'm not quite sure how it works underneath the hood. They have a little diagram and more documentation if you wanna read up on that. But uh, yeah, let's see if this works. And before we get started, I am going to just in my doc get ignore. Where are you? Here you are. Say PG data. That way, um, VS Code does not just crash based on all the Git changes because PG data is about to get a lot of data in it. Okay, so I'm going to come over here and just say Docker compose up. And I'm just going to go right ahead and run it in this mode so we can see the logs and make sure everything starts up and runs okay. So database is getting started. Looks like our web is waiting for our database and stuff to get set up. And then when this is set up, we'll go ahead and create a user and I'll show you guys. Okay, so this is something that um, kept happening to me and I thought this was quite annoying. So I'm getting this SQLized connection error and basically you can see why the database is still booting up and then it starts booting up here. Um, our, our wait for it script basically isn't working. It thinks the database is live but the database hasn't finished initializing. So the way we're gonna get around this and fix this is why not just reconnect? So unfortunately, SQLize does not have a reconnect script by default. So I'm gonna come over here to my models index. So what's happening is we're not able to connect here. And so it's throwing an error and the whole thing crashes. But really ideally, we'd like to try to reconnect after 100 milliseconds or something. So we're gonna write our own custom, basically rerun. So there is not a sleep function in JavaScript, but you can make your own sleep function. Um, this is how Stack Overflow recommends doing it. So what we're gonna do is create our SQLize um, object. If we crash, we're gonna sleep for a little bit and then just redo. So let's copy this, paste it in here. So I kinda wanna make this, this file into a function now and like an async function. So I'm gonna put it all the way down here and we're just gonna export default this guy. Export default this async function here. And I think I can just return like that. Cool, I can. And we're gonna say const here. And we're gonna keep create this into a regular function. So now instead of just returning an object, I'm gonna return models. So we're exporting an async function that will return models. 
So now what we can do is actually, maybe we should name this thing. I was gonna say maybe we can make this recursive, but that seems like something like this, making this recursive seems like a bad idea. So let's just say let um, connected is equal to false. So while we're not connected, we're going to try to connect. And we're gonna just say let sequelize. So we're gonna attempt to set sequelize here. And we're gonna catch. And so if we're able to connect, we say connected is equal to true. Um, if we're not able to connect, why don't we just console log um, reconnecting in let's say five seconds that seems like a good amount of time and we'll just sleep for five seconds and what's going on here unexpected wait inside a loop oh it doesn't like that I'm just going to say ESLint disable next line because we're not going to worry about that disable next line okay so we're going to try to connect and maybe we should set a max connections so let max reconnects is equal to I don't know let's say 20 let's say not connected and max reconnects and then every time we reconnect here we say max reconnects minus equal one and let's set this guy to let okay so here as long as we haven't connected and max reconnects is above zero basically we're gonna keep looping and if we make it down here and we have not connected we're just gonna return null so now in our index file over here we kinda have to change stuff So instead of models, we should really call this get models. So I'm going to say get models dot then, and then we get models from that. And then at the very top of our function here, we can say if not models. We can return and we'll console log could not connect to database. So now I can move this inside of here, give that a save, and that looks good. So now we're going to call our async function to get the models. Um, once we get the models, we'll make sure we connect it okay. And I kind of just want to run this and see what happens without even doing docker and make sure it does work and we have no just syntax errors and stuff. Cool, it looks like it started up, no problem. So now I'm gonna do docker build and we'll just build that and then we can run docker compose and all that stuff. And I'll switch to running it over here so you guys can see it better. Docker compose and I'm just gonna run down to clean up anything that wasn't um, destroyed below but now we should be reconnecting and even if wait for it doesn't work um, and our database is not quite up we should reconnect um, a couple times before just crashing out because that's kind of annoying okay so we built that so docker compose up and I know that this wasn't the point of the video to make this little reset or this reconnector but it was annoying that this kept uh, disconnecting. Here we go, looks like we started up okay. But yeah, what I wanted to show you guys with the volumes is now that we set that up and our DB just ran, oops, look at PG data, look at all this stuff in it. Uh, this was an empty folder that I created, but because uh, Postgres is writing data and stuff to it, it popped out there. But okay, so this is running now. 
I can come on over here to our server and I can just say create I'm gonna create a new user called John John at John.com paste him in here log in create a new team so I'm just gonna say hello world and I'm gonna come over here destroy it and then when that's done I'm gonna run docker compose down on it to make sure it's all cleaned up and then we're gonna boot it back up just to show you guys that John is still alive so docker compose up and while that's starting up I'll refresh show you guys it crash cool crashed because it hasn't started up yet and then when this thing starts up we'll refresh and hopefully John is still there okay database was interrupted the database system is starting up sequelize connection error the database system is starting up why did we get that we should have reconnected I added a try catch DB is available after nine seconds. Did I run? Oh crap, that's why I didn't run npm build. All right, so we actually weren't running the new code in Docker, even though I ran Docker build, and I'll show you guys why. So Docker compose down. So while I did build Docker, what I forgot to do is npm run build. I should really make a little command uh, line that does this for me. So now we can build this. So I just forgot to update our distribution here. Okay, but that shouldn't affect um, John being there or not. So, okay, so I built it. I'm now building the image. When that's done, I'll pop it back up and hopefully our server waits to start up. So Docker compose up. Okay, so our website is waiting for the database to start up as usual. The DB, cool, and that looks good. I wonder if we actually, nope, wait for it just worked that time. So we don't get to test out our script, but if we refresh, um, unexpected token I and JSON. What is this? Is this something? Let's refresh again. Is this a consistent error? Let's look at our network tab. It looks like invalid options provided Apollo server models is not defined. Okay. So looks like this did not work. Let's go over our code real quick. Models, we're returning models. Enter index here. Oh, up here. Our app.use models now does not work. So we need to wait to create both of these instances down here after we get our model. I don't think anything else is relying on the database model. Yes, it is. This is relating our add user middleware. So let's add our add user middleware. Paste that in here. We need to grab both of these. So we're gonna move all of this inside of our get models function now. Okay, so I just missed that. I'm surprised our server started up when I did npm start before. I guess I should have uh, double checked it actually worked, but let's give this another try. So I'm gonna close this over here. 
docker compose down. After that's done, wrap this up. rebuild that and we'll see if our new function works and I suppose I could just npm start refresh but actually John won't be there anyways and we're logged in as John already so we have this already here let's just run it from docker compose up I kind of hope we get a chance to see if our reconnect works. Maybe I'll root after this. I'll remove uh, the wait for it. Okay, so it started up. Let's see if uh, moving those insides fix that. Okay, cool. I see John, and we see our message: "Hello world." Hey you are alive so I apologize for how many errors we got in trying to set up this reconnect but I hope you guys get the idea of how um, volumes work and setting up um, Postgres so the data persists and now I want to do one quick test to verify that our um, reconnect logic does indeed work and I'm just going to comment out this command and remove the wait for it because we basically have our own custom wait for it now so now I'm gonna come over here close that and oh I did it one too many I did not gracefully uh, close that container but that's okay so now I'm gonna say docker compose up and if this does work we have reconnect logic uh, should be decent it's a shame sequelize does not have reconnect logic that we can just use and cool it doesn't work so unhandled rejection sequelize connection refuse connect econ weird we should be um reconnecting but we're not all right we'll fix this in the next video i wanted to focus this video on volumes and we already have tangented way too long into this so that's where I'm going to stop this video. In the next video, we'll get our custom reconnect logic working um, so we don't just crash if our database isn't quite up yet and our server is. Um, so that's it for this video, guys. Thank you for watching.